Hello YouTube, today we're going to have a look at Mars in Gemini. It will be in Gemini for seven months and a lot of the time it's going to actually be retrograde as well. So I'm, I don't know whether, maybe I'll just do everything in this one post because it's a big, it's a big deal and what I've done, I've written two whole big articles on it and um, I'm going to kind of use them as my notes so here we have it mars in gemini uh there's the illustration for it as well um it was interesting because yeah i when i did the illustration i knew that there had to be some kind of military presence here but when i looked at when it was last when mars was last in general um, in gemini it was actually during world war ii so there you go so that's kind of interesting anyway so um now i was looking through a lot of like i thought well what are the what's mainstream astrology saying about mars retrograde and it was saying or mars and gemini rather and it was saying you know it's incredibly gossipy rumors spread fast be careful what you say um communications can go very viral very quickly I mean, yes, Mars is speed and Gemini is very fast talking as well. So there will be, you know, there'll be furious debates. There will be all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I mean, I've said it's kind of like a war with words. So, um, yeah, other astrologers have said it's a great time to put energy into studying. I agree with that. Um, but there is a deeper and dark, darker side. There always is with dark star astrology. And um, so what I thought is probably quite likely as well, although there just hasn't been much of it in the news lately, I guess we're all kind of a bit, everybody's just worried about, you know, the heating stuff and the energy crisis and the war and Russia and ah. So, um, but I thought maybe there'd be some sex abuse scandals as well because, you know, unfortunately, you know, Gemini, is children really I mean it's a very young sign it's one of the early signs and you know Mars is is abuse and it's sex as well so and since I think that Mars when it goes retrograde has got that sort of Pluto vibe about it um, I mean I I just think and we'll talk about the retrograde later but anyway first I want to get through this Mars and Gemini and then we'll talk about the retrograde um, but so when when most mainstream astrologers go on about this kind of gossipy, be careful what you say kind of thing, you know, fast, furious, um, you know, a lot of the time, this Mars is going to be retrograde. Oh my God, sorry, you know what, I didn't bring the, can, can we hear, I'm sorry, that's probably going to be very dull now, isn't it? Uh, the, the, the vocals are going to be a bit dodgy, so I'll probably have to turn them out. Turn them up, hang on. All right, so, okay. All right, I've got myself in position now. So, um, so yes, so I, as I was saying, yeah, Mars really does behave differently when it's slow. Um, and, but I don't believe, right, a lot of people say that, um, that, you know, Mars retrograde it's the libido is low and all that kind of stuff. I don't think so. I think um, it just became, behaves differently. And it's like, a, I mean, I've said it's like a slow bake rather than its usual impulsive burn. And it acts more like Scorpio rather than an Aries Mars. So it's a, it's a Scorpio Mars. So it's more tactical, it's more intriguing. Um, and yeah, I don't believe it lowers libido. Um, I think instead it conceals one's urges rather like Scorpio would. So it's, it's, it's covert, covert ops and hidden sexual things as well, I think. Um, but while it is direct though, until it turns retrograde, it will be, it will be great for giving you the courage to speak out about subjects you feel passionate about. So I think I'm going to use this Mars retrograde while it's direct to really, I mean, people have been asking me about the election that's coming in America, 2024. 
Um, that's two years time. Do I really want to start talking about it yet? Mm, I don't know, but I, 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 I might. <laughs> anyway, so it might give me the courage to have a look ahead about those things. But I do want to talk about, I mean, one thing that someone said that was really nice was that, you know, I'm one of the few anti-woke astrologers. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I want to speak out more about those kind of things. And I, I probably will when, as this Mars is direct, is direct at the moment, it's in Gemini. It's got me back on YouTube. And I think this is the perfect post to, for me to sort of come back with properly doing astrology. Because all I've been doing on YouTube is moaning, basically, just moaning. So I'd rather, I want to be doing astrology on it. So here we go. So, um, yeah, loud protests as well. Maybe about, again, the energy crisis because it's energy, it's Mars, heat. There you go. Now, one thing that I found was quite interesting on Cafe Astrology was that they said, Mars retrograde in Gemini, there can be some stalling of intellectual and mental initiatives. Health issues may be a factor, especially in areas ruled by Gemini, including the lungs. So I just hope it doesn't mean any more lung inflammation. I know they're preparing a new, I know from someone who works in the health service, um, that they're preparing a new all seeing all dancing vaccination that somehow predicts what, um, what, oh God, I don't even know if I can talk about this stuff. You know, what's coming in terms of Roni, Roni vi variants. Yeah. So it, it, it can predict them now. Strange how it could never do it with the flu. Um, but anyway. Anyway, so, so there's a new one for this winter. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned about that. And I'm concerned about this Mars retrograde in Gemini because it rules, it rules the, the, the lungs. So there you go. Um, and plus, to compound everything, is the, the whole, um, you know, energy crisis as well. So there'll be people that can't afford to heat their homes. They'll be freezing, they'll be freezing, and they'll be, I mean, this is awful. And I can just see like pneumonia and things like that because of that, because uh, it doesn't help, does it? So, um, another thing I thought may be happening is the battle of the social media giants. And, you know, I, I really feel that acutely since I've, I'm someone who jumped into Facebook um, very early on, actually, uh, in 2012 from MySpace. So social media has always been a, a big interest. And of course, to someone who's Gemini rising, you know, it's technology. I love, I love it all, but it's just as, as you have seen recently, let's not talk about the horror that is Instagram anymore. But I think during this, during this retrograde, I wonder if if Instagram will tank. I mean, it's got a long way to fall because it is very high up. Um, so I don't know, but you know, uh, see what happens. I, I again, I want to do a dedicated post on this and have a look at the charts of TikTok and and you know Instagram and Vero. See if Vero is going to pick up. Everyone's raving about it. Anyway, so. Now, the fixed stars are really, really interesting because they're the biggies. So uh, Mars travels back from 25 degrees Gemini to 8 degrees Gemini. So it inco it covers, these are the fixed stars that are there. Aldebaran, the big one, the knight in shining armour, one of the royal stars. Um, so he's there. That's found in the face of Taurus. Um, he represents God's avenging angel, St. Michael. Um, Capella, which is Aruga, which is the, um, it's the chariot. Chariot driven by the charioteer, holding two goats and the goat, no, so, sorry, holding a mother goat, nursing two baby goats. So there's the sort of twins again, even though it's sort of accidental. Um, but somebody told me, somebody sent me an email saying that they think that, um, Capella or Aru Ariga, the, the chariot is also Thor's chariot. So I don't know much about Thor. Um, 
I don't know any any of that sort of mythology. I'm a Greco-Roman. I don't really know about the uh, the Scandinavian mythology. But if anyone does and sees that it's re relevant, relevant, I wonder if if it's got a similar energy to Aldebaran. Is Thor? I mean, he's kind of Zeus-like. I would imagine throwing his bolts down. But I guess he's yeah, he's another another heroic god. So. And yes, and it also goes through the Hades as well, which are a stormy bunch of stars in Taurus's face, and Orion's belt, which is the hunter, and he's another, I mean, he's a very sort of chess beaty macho man, um, bit of a James Bond, really, and, but Orion's belt, when you look at it in the sky, it's so phallic, it just looks, if you can, if you get a clear light, light clear night, you can see, like, it, it's basically the shape of a willy hanging down. This is belt. Hmm. Anyway, so, so I think that signifies kind of the media gods. They're in for a big fight. They are fighting for us. They're fighting for our clicks. They're fighting for our scrolly, scrolly, our swiping. Um, so, now, let's see. Okay, so here are all the fixed stars, and like, like I, it'd be very boring to read through all the dates and everything. So if you want to have a look at all the dates, um, they're on the website. Now, just a quick explanation. I've done it in the order of the retrograde, but you can also see that, that you know, they are, it goes, uh, Mars will be on the, these stars before then and after. Um, but, so where we are now, for, I'm recording this 1st of September, so we have Mars and Hades, abrupt, brave, aggressive, courageous, lacks concentration. I'm trying to concentrate. Anyway, I think I'll just read the, the most interesting ones, which are um, Aldebaran, which is great military preferment, but attended by much danger, liable to accidents, fevers and a violent death. So, I mean, the thing is, yeah, I know the fixed stars. This is the reason why so many people don't like the fixed stars, because they're just so, like, over the top. Um, but you've got to remember, like, most astrology in the past was for very famous people. Um, it was used more or as an orrery thing, so it was more like questions, because most people didn't know their birth time. So nasal astrology was it was very rare and it was always judged by it was always really for those very high up people like you know royalty where you knew the birth time and so and i also think it was really written for the collective as well so yeah so i i think the reason that they're so kind of over the top is that in those days you know when you look at it as a collective thing where no one individual is going to, you know, who's going to be in the military as some, you know, as 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 a dragon slaying Aldebaran knight in shining armor. Not many of us are. It's, you've got to sort of interpret it as, say, business, you know, and and not everyone's going to have a violent death. So yeah. Anyway, so but it is the the things with Aldebaran. It's. It's better, it depends which planet's on it as well. But Mars on Aldebaran, because it's quite a violent star anyway, you know, it is a dra it's a dragon slayer. So if you put Mars on it, it's, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be cute and fluffy, is it? So also Rigel, because it's the hunter. Again, you know, great military preferment. This is all great for being a soldier. Um, but, you know, there's always... Is unruly that one and same with Bellatrix you know liable to accidents surgeon see surgeons are good success as a, a soldier surgeon all these things so yeah um, let's see oh it's and also Mars when it's on El Nath that's in bull's horns 22 Gemini that's kind of good for lawyers quick-witted so you see more of the kind of Gemini on that one so those are those are the fixed stars I just thought we'd just touch on them um, but it's very useful I think to go back and see if there's a theme that repeats so anything that happens you know on October the 11th and then November the 15th and then March the 11th it's all on the same star and whether it has those themes or not you know 
I'm just looking at Anilam. Anilam on Orion's belt. So, so yeah. So these, it's the, not all fixed stars are so jam packed. Usually, you don't get them like you know, 24, 23, 22, 21, 19, 16. I mean, they're all right next to each other, and they're all really big stars. So that's why when I wrote about this, um, yeah, Gemini Decan two and three are just jam-packed and that's why this Mars retrograde is so important because these are the media gods these are the media gods these are the new the new clergy really you know so I really love to look back in time and see what happened the last time that Mars was in Gemini and retrograde and you have to go back to 1943 because there are other times Mars was in retrograde, some of the time in Gemini and then some of the time in another sign. But this one, I mean, this is this is uncanny because it's sort of the time period similar. You know, in 1943, it was end of October, as it is now. Uh, and it began at 22 Gemini, just a couple of de degrees from where it is now, where it will be. And then uh, ended on January the 10th. And it ends on, I think... Is it January the 12th this time? Yeah, yep. Yeah. So it's uncanny, it really is. And so you can't get more similar. So what does that mean? I mean, I mean, I truly believe we're in World War Three. It's just a silent war. I think we're in war with, we were in a war with Russia, for sure. Um, whether you see that as a positive or a negative thing, we're in a war, we're in a war against sort of the kind of wokeness that's happening, happening. And um, yeah, and I like Aldebaran because it's a spiritual warrior. And yeah, and uh, I feel very connected with uh, with Aldebaran. Anyway, so what happened last time you can see, okay, November the 3rd, it was the Holocaust. Um, so yeah, the, the, I mean this one. I mean obviously it went. It was a longer span of time, but this sort of focuses on on the longest actual, the worst time of it because it was a single. It was the largest single day massacre of Jews, forty three thousand shotgun to death by the SS in concentration camps. So these were actually shot, um, but that was the largest number in one day. And it was in Poland as well. So, you know, there's a lot of kind of sim not similar things going on, but it's that area again, you know. <sighs> anyway. Um, and then there was the first bombing of the Vatican um, during then as well. And the weirdly, the aircraft responsible was never identified. So who bombed them? Who bombed them? Um... You know, some might think that's a good thing as well. I mean, I don't know what the, the Vatican was like in the war times, whether it was really corrupt then or whether it was the Pope was all right. I don't know. But uh, anyway, that's kind of interesting, a war on religion as well. And then you had, I thought this was interesting too, the, the Tehran conference was with US President Franklin D. Roosevelt, Winston Churchill and Soviet leader Joseph Stalin met to dis discuss war strategy. So this is, you know, they were kind of with Russia then. Um, and on November the 30th, they agreed to a planned invasion of Europe, codenamed Operation Overlord. So, yeah, so I just thought those are very interesting can we see some mirrors now of these similar names and issues? You know, you know, like they say, history doesn't repeat, but it rhymes or something. Anyway, we'll see. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to read all through this because this will be incredibly boring and then you'll just skip. I mean, basically what I've done is I've done what Mars direct means for each sign and... Um, more specifically for the for the mutable signs because they really it's really important for them so and I've got them for each sun as well so 
if you are, for example, I'll do me. Um, I yeah, I have Gemini rising, and I'm an Aquarius sun, so I'm going to be more dominant than usual. And I, but I don't want to take advantage of others. Anyway, so that's how it works. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't do. I've got this fancy pants. Here we go. Let's just look at the journey because there are. Take it down a bit. So look, here we. Here's the initial Mars retrograde where it's. This is an interesting point here. This T square. This is on November the twenty first. Um, and we're going into winter here, and we have this square to Neptune, which is very deceptive. And then it's opposite Ceres, which is grain as well. So I don't know if there's going to be... People have been talking about food shortages as well. Um, so, so this could be that too. And here's Mars. Um, and it goes on... How long does it go on for? Yeah, look. November the 23rd, yeah, all the way to, then it stops, and then we get another, well, oh, then then Venus and Neptune and Mars, Venus opposite Mars, interesting, um, this is probably more, or this is more to do with sex scandals, you know what I said earlier about maybe sex scandals, so December the 1st, that is, is more likely look there's children as well you know venus and mercury together young girls um yeah yeah lilith is around too lilith is in gemini and this is well this is true lilith though i think it finishes off quite i think we're okay during this christmas yeah this yod this is in interesting november the 14th yeah, November the, I can't bloody see you. Yeah, it's the 11th. 11th to the 14th, and the moon is with it as well. I think November the 11th could be a crucial day, because Yods, whoever has anything at 24, Gemini, they might be in the news. And the last time I made a Yod prediction, it was, it was Prince Andrew, actually. Uh, so I don't know who this is going to point to. Sex scandal, pointing to someone with 24 Gemini. Um, yeah, because Venus is in there with Mercury again. Yeah, that'll be, that's an interesting time. Okay, so basically the meaning of Mars retrograde on its own, forget about whether it's in Gemini or not, is it's, I, I don't think, like usually what happens with the retrograde is that the planet becomes, sometimes they say it becomes its opposite, but it doesn't mean that Mars will become a benefic, because it's still supposedly a malefic. Um, like I said, it doesn't become that. It, I think it becomes more plutonic. Um, and yeah, it could ha also have more of the energy of Pallas Athena as well, with the tactical stuff. And also somebody said that it's, it's more like it traveling in the 12th house, so it makes it more of a spiritual warrior, which I think is a good thing. Um, and if you combine that with the Aldebaran and all these really important fixed stars, it's a spiritual war. This this is the war of the gods coming up. It's huge. It's huge. It really is. Um, also, another thing though, um, yes, in terms of our personal lives with sexual relationships, a new sexual attraction could burn out very quickly while a fling with an old flame could turn into something unexpectedly long term. So it's, it's yeah, it's very contradictory. Um, our ambitions and goals are going to come under scrutiny as well. Um, and it's also said that anybody that starts a war during Mars retrograde are likely to lose. Now, what this means in normal everyday terms is, you know, just summoning someone to court or initiating a new business campaign against a rival as well. Um, in anything that's competitive, you're just advised really to wait until Mars is direct again before you start really going to, you know, war. But if somebody should wage war on you, like just attack you, psychic attack you, whatever it is, then you must defend yourself. 
it's fine to defend yourself but just don't initiate anything like that. Also just to give you an idea of the deckhands as well, so deckhand three, this is the one that has all Orion's belt, um, so really we're looking at these stars at the top up to about here and it, I mean it's, it's jam-packed as you can see. I call this one media gods and business tycoons and um, the tarot card associated with it is the Ten of Swords, so I mean, it, it's not easy, really. Um, and let me just go to, let's have a look at people with Mars in Gemini 3, just get an idea of the energy. Okay, oh, interesting, Franklin D. Roosevelt, wasn't he the one that went to, to that conference? The US chart of independence has Mars in Gemini 3. Edward Snowden, who, um, he's the guy, didn't he, wasn't he a whistleblower about internet stuff? Martin Luther King, Pope Benedict, blah, 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 I don't know which one that is. <laughs> um, Henry Kissinger, Prince Philip of England, and uh, Sean Connery, James Bond, oh yeah. And that's it really, anyone interesting there? And then I think, let's look at Deccan 2. I mean, what I wrote about this one, yeah, I mean, it's, it's love to win with their words. They conquer their beloved by texts and emails. Um, it just fits with the whole, um, the whole kind of like uh, internet war, war with words and uh, all that kind of stuff. Oh yes, it's really wheeling and dealing as well, incredibly. You know, it, it's it's pursuits. It's real. Um, it's a real predator as well. Uh, same with in terms of sex as well. It's hugely. They just enjoy the chase so much. Oh gosh, just realise it actually goes all the way back to decan one. So it's all three decans. So yeah. Um, so uh, maybe it's not worth going through all the deckhands, I think. But um, Rigel is an important star because it's it's in Orion. And, oh, let's have a look at the... See, again, we've got some James Bonds. There is a theme, isn't there? That's why I love, I love reading through. Yeah, no, we will. We'll look at all the examples. So Benito Mussolini. There you go. Uh, Elizabeth I, definitely Mars in Gemini. Um, George Soros. Hmm. Yes, Overlord. Say no more. Um, Pierce Brosnan, yeah, and uh, Steve Martin, Johnny Wiseman, he was Tarzan, wasn't he? Again, you know, quite, see they're all quite, yeah, macho men, even though it's Gemini, you don't think of them as being uh, Jim Morrison as well. So, okay, so that's that one. Oh yes, the key word for that decan, by the way, was roller coasters and strategists, because this one is uh, where there's a Riga in there as well. Yeah, Dakan 2 is definitely more about the the chariot. So that's the one that's more connected with Thor. So each, you know, each of the decans of, of Gemini has got a lot of heroic sides to it, which you wouldn't expect. And also, yes, another thing that's important about Gemini is that it's supposed to be the gateway of the gods. Um, and opposite it in Sagittarius, is is the um, exit of the souls. So yeah, so this is the gateway, sorry, this is the gateway of the souls, um, not the gods, the gate, gateway, so it's, it's an entry point and an exit point is opposite in Sagittarius. So it, it's, it's on the Milky Way as well. So these two points are, that axis is really important. Okay, so here we are in Deccan 1 and here we can see the latter half of it, this is where uh, Mercury turns direct on the Hades. Um, it's going to be going past Aldebaran, Ain. Um, these are really important stars. Um, not going as far back as Pleiades, but the Pleiades are in Gemini, just just at the very start. So these are the dandy warriors and geek cheek, cheek, geek cheek, cheek. Anyway, um, at the moment I'm, I've really got into James Bond, and I just think just it's it's funny it's coincided with this whole Mars in Gemini thing and um, since we've already hit on two sh two James Bonds with Mars in Gemini I think that's really interesting so let's see the last lot here Mars in Gemini 1 got any more Bonds 
Um, I don't think I put, what's his name, Craig, um, Daniel Craig in here because I didn't know much about him then. So, <laughs> oh my God, look at these lot. <laughs> oh no, they're not, well, I don't know, some people might like them. So you've got Tony Blair, the Dark Lord himself, Charlie Mann, Charlie Main, Boris Johnson. How opposite can you get, really? EU Treaty of Rome, so it's the EU chart. Hiroshima Bomb, oh God, some hideous ones. Uh, Myra Hindley, the serial killers, uh, Myra Hindley and Brady, they're Davidson. So yeah, that, that's their um, composite chart of them together, by the way. So you can see, you know, there's quite a lot of... Now, Tony Blair, I think he's a great example of Mars and Gemini 1 because when he does his speeches, he's like this kind of... He's, he's, like, a, this, he's like he's given a sermon. I always see him as being very, like, uh, ecclesiastical as a person. Yeah, I mean, back in the 90s, I was a big fan of Tony Blair. I thought he was amazing. And... Um, because he gave such amazing speeches and he, you know, at the time, you know, when I, I was, I was very left wing and he was Labour, but he had this kind of new modern thing and he, he, um, he invited all the kind of Brit pop, pop stars round to 10 Downing Street. And it was such a time of, you know, Britain, cool Britannia. It really was. Um, yeah. And it was kind of cool to be British and the flag was very, it was like mod revival. So, so yeah, but I just think, yeah, he's, he knew, he made love to the media. I mean, he gave great speeches and uh, now he just looks like a freaking some sort of lizard. Anyway. So what does Mercury retrograde mean for Aries? Ways of thinking that are holding you back are negative and have got to go. So give your brain a total reboot. Turn everything on its head by listening to the media that is quite opposite to what you usually take in. Purposely seek those who think the complete opposite of you so that you can have exciting debates. That way you can test out whether your own opinions can stand up to interrogation. Mars retrograde in the house of communications means that sometimes you will simmer with rage at someone who has pushed your buttons for a very long time before you hit back. And then when you do, you will tend just to vomit out a personal attack. This period could get you into trouble online, but it will also stimulate your synapses into reaching, or sorry, researching information to back up your argument. Of course, this all means that you will learn a lot and it might mean that you also have to chuck out a lot of redundant theories that were false. Mars here puts much energy into your local environment, so you will feel very inspired by meetups in your area, even if you have a few heated debates along the way. Taurus, Mars is in your second house, so burn the clutter before Mars does it for you. If you have been holding on to too many useless possessions, Mars retrograde will do a great job of nuking all those dust gathering knickknacks you have lying around your home. Take this opportunity to go through your belongings and see whether you really need them. A good clear out will revitalize your energy and create space for a new vibration to come in. If you stubbornly hold on to vast hordes of drunk, ju drunks, <laughs> no, junk, sorry, Mars might decide to erupt in the form of a house fire. Don't worry, this is really very rare, so don't panic. But symbolically, this is a very apt image for what Mars wants to do when stuff needs recycling. It is Phoenix from the flame stuff. Ma uh, money will have a habit of burning a hole in your pocket during this time. You will have an extended period where you can choose to make investments work for you, however. During the retrograde, you can strategically plan your business moves for when Mars is direct. It's all about strategy and patience, and you can achieve a lot with Mars here if you learn how to rein in those greedy impulses. Gemini. Yes, Mars is in your sign, in your first house, as if you didn't already know. So you will get the opportunity to rebuild your persona from the bottom up. Events that happen will force you to reconstruct your personality or even your physical body altogether. You will become, it will become apparent that you cannot simply patch over the cracks and that some deep down actual cleansing is needed. 
Mars is a destroyer and the healing scalpel of the surgeon that removes any toxic relationships or blockages in your body that are weighing you down or preventing flow. Conflict surfaces in relationships so that you lose patience with keeping up a full space to please people. The only way you can be now is authentic. So if you've been keeping it real, the volcano action of the retrograde should clear out Sorry, if you've not been keeping it real, the volcano action of the retrograde should clear out any toxic waste you have been retaining. Mars in your first house is a great period to be quite selfish and work on your physical body with exercise, even through vanity. You will end up with a healthier, fitter body by the end of it, which can only be a good thing. Cancer, it's in your 12th house for you, and this mystical zone is rather a weird place for Mars to hang out. It's like a flame-breathing dragon that suddenly finds itself 2,000 leagues under the sea. Any trumpets of fire will come out as bubbles, but those dragon wings can learn to swim pretty fast. This transit is a floaty, mystical time, and one where you might find that what spiritual values you might... Sorry... One way you might find out what spiritual values are worth fighting for. Mars retrograde in the Neptunian 12th house has a Joan of Arc type of energy, and it is the spiritual warrior. The much maligned 12th is called the house of self-undoing because it isn't a place that is conducive to material abundance. It's the area of the chart where some self-flagellation happens to some extent to gain enlightenment, but you won't have to beat yourself senseless with a pointy stick However, instead, Mars will bring challenges to your life, usually, though, some kind of loss, where you will painfully have to let go of something which you've become addicted. You might go through some cold turkey over drugs, alcohol, gluten, sugar, or even a person. So during this time, you will put yourself into a kind of rehab and be quite hermit-like, hermit-like. Meditation, yoga, martial arts are good, but anything really that brings a mind-body connection and space for restoration and healing. Think of it as an extended time in the womb. When Mars goes direct again, you should start to feel the contractions of the red planet as it becomes impatient for rebirth. It won't be long until Mars resurrects itself in your own sign. So those wobbly Neptune bubbles will transform into the confident, strident flames of the phoenix. Hooray! Leo, you have Mars retrograde in the house of friendship, which could mean you turning into a network dynamo or having a lot of niggly arguments with friends. This transit will sort out the wheat from the chaff in terms of who are your true blood brothers or sisters and those who are just a bloody nuisance. During this time, you will be brutal in how much time you spend on social engagements. Anything that is draining or does not resonate with your soul will have to go. That means clubs where you no longer fit in or friendships where you have grown apart. With Mars, you won't have the patience to suffer fools gladly. So even if you don't mean to end a friendship, it could just happen anyway. Others sense that you're bored or not giving them the attention they crave so that they... They will fly off to a more captive audience, and that's totally fine. Birds of a feather flock together, or so you should have the chance to move on yourself. With family, you are stuck with them. Marriages, you make the effort to ride through the bad patches. But the beauty of friendships is that nothing holds you together unless you've made some kind of Masonic pact. This transit is also in your hopes and wishes sector, so that you will place a significant amount of energy into wishful thinking. If some friends do suddenly disappear, it shouldn't be very long until new ones take their place. Voids have a habit of being filled, so don't worry if you feel cut off from company for a little while. It will give you the chance to dream up a new social network filled with people who most closely align with your interests. Virgo, this is an important one for you because it's in your 10th house, Angular house. So Mars revving backwards in your career house can be a double-edged sword. You could get an extra boost of ambition here, but it can also make you unduly scheming or even ruthless, however. 
Mars retrograde can be helpful in that you should be daring and pioneering in terms of pushing, pushing yourself out into the world. There's, it's always good to have courage. So this transit is a lot easier to handle if you're self-employed. You will have the motivation to try new things without anyone holding you back. The only thing is that Mars can be pretty defensive while retrograde, so you might not take public criticism too well. You might choose to leave a job where Mars goes direct when Mars goes direct after a build-up of frustrations in the workplace. I would wait until Mars turns direct before you make any leaving announcement. You want to say goodbye um, holding a good reference. Mars often means brave new starts, sometimes made impulsively. However, you know you have locked you you know you have looked at all the options with the retrograde and you're not being too rash in your decision. Mars sometimes slows achievements down in your career house and Mars can feel quite frustrated with the pace and want to take things a lot quicker. Resist the temptation to turn up the heat. You can't rush a good cake. The challenge with Mars here is thinking long term and realising you don't have to do everything at once. Another problem is finding it hard to work as a team player you will feel highly self-sufficient at this time. Libra Mars is retrograde in the ninth house for you, and that's your house of beliefs and religion. And that means you could get highly zealous. So confrontation with other cultures and tolerance of their strange customs becomes an issue. In your hometown, you might have a valid point, but complaining that there's no tomato ketchup in the wilds of Congo is another situation altogether. So during this transit, you will find out just how adaptable your wild gypsy um, traveller side of you really is. This transit gives you the fantastic opportunity to re-evaluate your beliefs and perhaps remove those elements mainly there through indoctrination as a child. Pushing yourself to travel to places out of your comfort zone is also a possibility at this time. Amazingly, you should find that you can live without the Wi-Fi or ketchup or whatever Western comfort you've grown accustomed to. At the same time, expect some frustration to surface as it will take time to adapt to the new mode of being. The same goes for you if you take up a new spiritual practice that involves discipline. Yoga or martial arts are attractive at this time, but putting up with sore muscles can be challenging too as the body stretches into alien shapes. Mars retrograde should make you quite brave and game to try anything. However, by the time it goes direct, Mars cannot help but propel you into new territory due to the pioneering energy it has built up while it was retrograde. Scorpio, this one's in your eighth house. So prepare to start amputating any nightmare brain cells that have been messing with your psyche. You get to be your own personal psychologist as you become very well acquainted with the dungeons of your soul. That sounds dramatic, but Mars Inverted has an immense plutonic feel to it, and the 8th house is just plain creepy. So this experience is hardly going to be a summer stroll in the park, but you are Scorpio and this is kind of your, your energy, so I think it'll be easier for you. No, so instead this transit will drag you through the woods backwards, kicking and screaming. It doesn't have to be that way at all though, it could be more like Alice falling into a rabbit hole because you're just so darn curious and it will just get curiouser and curiouser with Gemini. The universe can speak, speak to you in quite mysterious ways and feel entirely supernatural. If you stick your fingers in your ears and refuse to acknowledge messages from your shadow, then that's when the dragging through the woods part is most likely to start. So pay attention to who or what makes you angry. If you drink, your subconscious could spill out involuntarily, taking you or your company by surprise. The demon's alcohol could really show its face at this time. If the demons don't raise or rise because you're a sober sort, you might experience Mars internally instead. Arguments could erupt around you out of nowhere, but it should be fun watching the performance, but try not to get lured into the battle. Mars is in the seventh house for Sagittarius, and it could be quite selfish there and find it quite tough retreating through the house of relationships. 
But what Mars will learn is, at the end of it, is compromise. Others will test your patience, that's for sure, but at the same time, you will find it impossible to go it alone. One way or another, you will have to learn to grit your teeth and cooperate. Mars here means putting energy into dealings with others, and that includes business collaborations too. You can find yourself going back over old ground with partners, maybe old scores are settled, or an en enemy resurfaces. You will get the opportunity to thrash it out good and proper when Mars suddenly turns direct again, but astrologers usually advise that you should not start a war when Mars is retrograde, otherwise you shall, will lose the battle. All these days and can often also mean legal proceedings as well. So I wouldn't, you wouldn't want to file for divorce, especially if you have much equity to lose. If you're after a large settlement from your ex, forget it if you initiate proceedings. However, if the other party starts the ball rolling, then you should be fine. Indeed, if it's they who had done the dirty, then you can secretly smile to yourself that divine retribution will take care of everything. So Capricorn, Mars is in the sixth house retrograde for you. So it could actually feel quite inflamed in the house of health. So you might get quite sweaty while it's here and have strange rashes. But this doesn't have to be the case if you're open and honest with your feelings and don't keep your anger bottled up. Otherwise, this is where Mars will do its psychosomatic thing and show up as weird symptoms. Your body will speak to you in strange ways and have you look up what nasty boil on chin means. You will learn that every body part con uh, corresponds to a humour. It's not just for medieval doctors. At this time, you could benefit from a good detox, so refresh your blood. Again, you don't need to get hold of some leeches, but foods that purify the blood, such as cabbage, lemon and garlic, will be very beneficial at this time. Mars rules the blood and iron, so check those iron levels also. Apart from health, this is also the house of daily work and servants, so if you've been feeling like the office slave, then you might well blow up at any whip crackers at this time. Speak up before you let the anger fester, otherwise your complaints can come out in an undiplomatic and embarrassing way. Mars can cause a lot of trouble here if it's not channeled wisely. Sticking to a rigorous routine would be a great use of this energy. A new diet and fitness routine beckons. Aquarius, it's in your fifth house and this is the house of lovers where you want passionate Mars retrograde to be. Oh yes, the zone of love affairs, fun, leisure time and children. Mars here will not start any wars or get silly and resentful as it's too busy bounding around with the dogs or abseiling down a cliff to be bothered with petty squabbles. So make time then to take advantage of the enthusiastic and motivating energy of the red planet and go on an adventure. Of course, Mars will be going backwards, so there can be a certain amount of frustration here too, but not if you give Mars free reign and let it play. It just won't be taking its usual direct route, that's all. How can you be passive aggressive while holding a multicolored ice cream swirl smothered in hundreds and thousands? In terms of starting a love affair, there could be a period of shy courting where you enjoy the chase and high pop expectations. The tension is formed from the drawing back of the arrow before it's released. Mars then hits its target at twice the speed since it's built up such traction. So play this strategically and resist the temptation to rush in and spook your prey. Yes, it will feel like you're on the hunt, but Mars is not only the god of both sex and war for nothing. And finally, Pisces. Another major position for you, the fourth house. So it is, is there a simmering volcano sitting behind the sofa in the living room? Well, that's what it will feel like with it in your domestic zone. Put a child lock over those sharp objects and make sure the fire alarms are working. If you don't, then avoid lighting candles while under the influence. Okay, so all the warnings are out of the way. You might find this transit quite exciting, for it's quite a sexy place for Mars to be, especially if you just moved in with your beloved. It's a kind of transit where you'll be furiously decorating and putting a lot of energy into your love nest, which would be the best way to use this position. 
So knock out walls, paint walls in warm glowing colours, install an antique, antique fireplace and yes, damn it, light the dinner candles. You'll have an extended time of Mars's ambition, aggression and focus in the most private zone of your chart. The fourth house is the territory you own, so it's also it's also a helpful transit if you work from home, because Mars is well suited to wheeling and dealing, so you can do your best Trump impression in the comfort of your home office. Don't get the rooms mixed up though, you don't want to act Trump out in the bedroom unless your partner likes belligerent role playing in a blonde wig. I can't believe I wrote that. Anyway, the point is you will need a sense of humour with Mars in this most sensitive zone, Right, I think we're in for quite a rough ride, to be honest. Um, I really hope, I really hope people have the courage to stand up for their rights because they're going to need to, they're going to really need to. And um, I'm just hoping the good gods will be on our side, you know, uh, God's avenging angel, you know, I think we need him. We need him and uh, God bless you all because we're going to need it and I don't know what's going to be happening in Europe. Um, you know, I've, 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 myself, I just know that I have to kind of get through the winter and um, a lot of us are regrouping and only doing what's necessary. You know, I've slimmed, like I've said, I've slimmed down the social media because time is money and there's not a lot of of it in Europe, um, I'm very grateful. I have a, 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 a big US audience and I think you'll be better off. Um, but think of us in Europe, please. We're going to be cold. It's going to be cold. It's going to be grim in Europe. I think US will fare a bit better um, than we will, uh, which is just sad for me to say, but I just think it's true. So, so anyway, um, as for how to use this energy, it's sharpen your pens, you know, sharp, your pen is your, or your mouse is your biggest weapon now. Um, and, uh, I, I, I don't know if we, we can just say no to, this is the problem because they've got us by the ghoulies, you know, um, it, what if I say, oh, well, I'm not going to pay my gas bill, but my electric and gas is together, and they've they cut me off, that's it. <laughs> they cut me off, no electricity, I can't, this is the awful thing, is that if you work on the internet, you can't live without electricity, you just got to pay it, pay it. So, um, maybe the people that work, that don't depend on computers so much, like, I don't know, farmers or people who are more analog, can say no to this and there will be people like who I mean I'm sure I'll just about survive it just means you have to cut back on certain things and all the money will be going towards warming the house or sitting on a hot water bottle or whatever but um yeah for this Mars retrograde there are going to be people who either pay this extortionate amount of heating or they're going to start or, or eat. It's like eat or heat, you know, that's what it's going to be. And um, they're going to eat, aren't they? So, I mean, yeah. And if, if they cut people off, that's just going to cause riots or something, you know? So I don't know. We're in a really, this is a really, it's no coincidence that this happened the last time in World War II in such as and and during like the worst time of it in terms of of the holocaust i mean it's in, insane so it's it's a big one it really is a big one all right then so <laughs> try and be cheerful about it but i think if you if the spiritual warriors is going to take their toll on light workers and spiritual warriors it will take their, its toll on them, but I think we'll get through this and we'll be all right. We have to be. We have to be, because otherwise, you know, what's the point? Is there no is there no good in the world? There has to be. This is the first time I've done this kind of stuff, so let me know if you like it. I'm sorry if this is a little bit disjointed with, you know, me in the corner and then 
screen sharing but um no I, I don't think all of them are going to be like this but because I wanted to show you a lot of stuff so um so anyway so thanks for listening and uh like subscribe and all that kind of stuff and if, go to the website if you want to see the list of things the parts of the decans that i showed you for mars were members only but it gave me sort of sneak preview of the members here so i'm going to do that a lot on youtube i think you know so so yeah so thanks for listening all the best Bye bye